In today's video, we're going to talk about Webflow shortcuts. If you want to make more money on a project, you have two options. You can either charge more, which is not always possible, or the second option is to get faster. Now, getting faster is something that you can always get better at. You can always win a second here and there, and at the end of the project, it will play a big difference. Now, one of the best ways to get faster at Webflow development is by learning shortcuts. Luckily, Webflow is packed with awesome shortcuts that will help you cut your development time in half. So without further ado, let's look into it. We're going to break the shortcuts into three different categories. Universal shortcuts, pro workflow shortcuts, and navigational shortcuts. Let's start with universal shortcuts. Universal shortcuts are shortcuts that are the same for almost any program. These shortcuts include Ctrl C for copying elements or Command C on Mac, Ctrl V or Command V for pasting elements, Delete or Backspace for deleting elements, Ctrl X for cutting elements. This gets you the same as hitting Ctrl C and then deleting an element. And finally, we have Ctrl or Command Z for undo and Ctrl plus Shift plus Z or Command plus Shift plus Z for redo. If you're not using these, start by learning these shortcuts first. These will not only improve your Webflow workflow, but it will also help you increase your productivity in other programs like Photoshop, MS Word, Final Cut Pro and almost any other program out there. Next, we're going to look into pro workflow shortcuts. These shortcuts are mainly Webflow specific, however, not all of them. In my opinion, learning these shortcuts will help you increase your productivity the most. We'll start with Ctrl plus E, which opens the finder. You can use it to add any element, layout or symbol to the page. But not only that, you can also use it to switch between pages you're working on, create a new page, go to a collection, or go to a collection page. All of this is possible without even touching the mouse. Another cool and less known Webflow feature is hidden inside the Finder. You can also click on the Settings icon in the upper right corner where you can enable element selection and adding assets. Enabling element selection will, as the name suggests, enable you to select elements on your page by typing the class of the element. Enabling adding assets will enable you to add assets from the asset panel by simply typing the name of the asset you uploaded. You can use this to add lot of animations, images, and quite frankly, any other asset that you have uploaded there earlier. Once you get used to this shortcut, your output will increase dramatically. Now that we have a fast way of adding things to our page, it's time to learn how to add classes without having to click on the style panel. With an element selected, you can hit Ctrl plus the return key to add a class to this element. If you want to rename the last class of the element, then you can hit Ctrl plus Shift plus return or Command plus Shift plus return on Mac. I promise you, if you start using the Finder and the class adding and renaming shortcuts, you're going to save yourself a lot of time. Next, we're going to cover another important shortcut. Ctrl plus Shift plus A. With an element selected, you can hit Ctrl, Shift and A to create a symbol out of the element. Next, if you want to duplicate an element, all you have to do is hold Alt on your keyboard and simply drag the element. If you want to apply symmetrical paddings or margins, all you have to do is hold Alt on your keyboard and drag the margin selector or the padding selector. If you want to apply the same padding or margin on all four sides, then you should hold the Shift key. To reset a property, you should hold Alt and click on the property. Our next group of shortcuts are navigational shortcuts. As the name suggests, these shortcuts allow you to navigate through the designer without using your keyboard. Once you get used to this workflow, you're going to be way faster. First, we're going to cover arrows. With left and right, 
You can navigate through sibling elements and with up and down, you can access parent and child elements. You can also use Alt plus up or down to go to the next or previous element as they appear in the navigator. I personally don't use Alt plus up or down, but it might be something you feel more comfortable with. Next, numbers for breaking points. When you open a new project, you have three breaking points. You can shift through breaking points by hitting the numbers 1, 2, and 3, with 1 being the biggest screen and 3 being the smallest. Once you add a new, bigger breaking point, the number 1 will be mapped to the biggest breaking point available. This can be a little confusing at times, since you're used to having your default breaking point at number 1. The rest of the shortcuts won't cut your development time significantly, but it can help you save a few seconds here and there. To navigate through the right hand tabs, you can use S, D, G, and H keys. S for the style panel, D for the settings panel, G for the style manager panel, and H for interactions. Now let's get to the left hand toolbar. A opens the Add Element panel. I personally stopped using the Add Element panel since I can add any element with the Finder by hitting Ctrl plus E. If you know which elements are listed in this panel, I would recommend giving the Finder workflow a shot. For the rest of the panels, learning and using shortcuts would still be advisable. There will be certain instances when you want to add an alt tag to an image, rename a symbol, or simply have a peek at the navigator. Here are the shortcuts. You can use Shift plus A to open the Symbols panel. Z will open the navigator. Alt plus Z will expand or collapse all elements in the navigator. P will open the Pages panel. Next we have the Asset panel, which is J on your keyboard. This will open the Assets panel, U for Audit panel, and Alt plus U to expand Audit panel sections. All of these shortcuts and many more can be found inside the Webflow Designer. If you need a reminder, all you have to do is hover over the Help section icon and click on Keyboard Shortcuts. There, you'll be able to see a list of all Webflow shortcuts that you have at your disposal. On your next project, Try out a few shortcuts that you think will benefit you the most, and with every project, try to add one or two more. Adding too many shortcuts at once to your workflow can be overwhelming, so take it slow and start adding shortcuts one by one. Once you get used to the workflow with shortcuts, you'll be able to develop websites in no time. Let us know what's the biggest time saver in your workflow. If you want to learn how to overcome Webflow limitations and bring your technical understanding to the next level, consider subscribing to our channel. Here we teach all things Webflow and the business side of web design. Cheers and thanks for watching.